Hello students and welcome to our continuing lesson on um, relative standing. We talked about percentile, we talked about z-scores, and now we'll talk about the five number summary. So the five number summary is, well, very similar to what it sounds, it's five numbers. Um, it's basically five numbers that can be used to summarize a set of data. So the first number is the minimum value. Second is Q1. We call this Q1. And this is the 25th percentile. Uh, then we have the median, also known as X tilde, also known as the 50th percentile. These are all the same way of saying the same thing. I'm sorry, these are all different ways of saying the same thing. Uh, we have Q3. This is the 75th percentile. And we, we know methods for calculating all of this, um, but don't worry about that too much. Uh, what I want you to focus on is what these numbers mean and what they represent. And then finally, we have the maximum value. Okay, so five numbers. The min, minimum value, Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum value. So in, uh, in the example that we had from earlier, using this, this data set right here, okay, we can look at this and sort of figure out the, the five number summary for uh, data set one. Our min is 4.5. Um, I've already calculated the, the uh, quartile 1 or the 25th percentile. You should calculate this that as a good exercise for yourself and as a way to check my work as well. I got that Q1 is 35. Q also known as the median is 68 Q3 is 113 and then finally the max is 235 so those that's our five number summary uh, what I also did was I typed this 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 whole thing into a list. So I went to my GID 384 calculator, typed that all into a list. I ran uh, stat calc one variable stat, type in the name of the list. And you can just see this gives me everything as well. This is how I got these numbers. If you scroll down to the bottom, it will give you min, Q1, median, Q3, and then the max value. So with that in mind, um, we can now use this information to do to do some other very very useful calculations. So one of the things that we're going to use a lot in stats is the interquartile range, or the IQR, and this is pretty straightforward. This is Q3 minus Q1. Okay, that is the IQR. And so for our example here in data set one, the IQR is 113 minus 35, which is 78. And so um, again, don't worry too much about how to calculate these numbers, you can see that your calculator figures it out for you. The IQR is a very simple calculation. More importantly, what we want to focus on is what these numbers tell us. And so one of the things that is really useful about the IQR is to help us find the outlier. So this is the definition, this is the formal definition of an outlier. We talked about ordinary versus unusual. We talked about what looks like an outlier, what may be an outlier. Uh, now we can actually pinpoint it. So if a value is larger than Q3 plus 1.5 the IQR, or if a value is less than Q1 minus 1.5 time, 
times IQR, then it is an outlier. So if you imagine a number line, for example, if you imagine a just a long number line that could go on forever, okay, uh, this right here is Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. And some other number, and these are all numbers that we can calculate, Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. Okay. So if the number falls within this part right here, okay, it may be ordinary, it may be unusual, okay, but one thing we know is that it is not an outlier. And then anything that falls outside of it would be an outlier. So there are some, maybe some upper outlier, and then there are some lower outliers as well. So it's like this, these two numbers here are the cutoff point for making something an outlier or not. So this question here asks, uh, find the outliers in data set one. Okay, so let's work on that right now. So the nice thing is that once we have the five number summary, uh, the calculations can be done rather quickly. So we want to know first, uh, what is Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR? Well, Q3 is 113. So that's uh, 113 plus 1.5 times the IQR, which is 78. So that is $230 million. So for data set one, uh, this point here is 230. And then let's do the lower end of this. And I apologize for not giving enough space here. This is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So Q1 is 35 minus 1.5 times 78 is going to give you some negative number here. This would be negative 72. So basically what this tells us is there are no lower outliers. So anything, uh, anything less than negative 72 or greater than 230 would be uh, an outlier. So looking at the data set, you can see that on the upper end, there's only one outlier, that's 235. So the only outlier we have in data set one is 235, and that's because it's bigger than 230. It's bigger than that cutoff point. So there you have it. We have uh, several different ways to measure relative standing. We have the z-score. We have uh, the, the percentile and we also have the five number summary to help us. In particular, the five number summary helps us determine what is an outlier and what is not an outlier. The z-scores help us figure out um, whether something is usual or unusual or how extreme it is. Okay. So I, I've, left, I've written a couple exercises down here uh, for you to do on your own. And so you should be doing this on your own. Okay, so I've given you a bunch of data, and this is the question based on the statistics, which is more extreme, um, a man who is 78 inches tall or a man who weighs 285 pounds, based on the data that I've given you here. Okay. So uh, we, can also, we, we can always eyeball and we can say, well, 230, 285, that's a pretty heavy guy, uh, but maybe that is more extreme, or maybe it's not as extreme as a man who's 78 inches. So that's six foot six. So Six foot six is pretty tall, 285 is pretty heavy. We want to figure out which one is more extreme. Okay, and a little hint here, use some z-scores to make the comparison. Uh, next, I've given you basically this, the same problem that we had from up, up there. We've done the first part already, calculate the five numbers summary. I've done that with you. And then I'm asking you now to construct a box plot. Um, if you don't remember how to construct the box plot, I would look at page 
122 uh, in your textbook. Okay, so if you don't remember, look at page 122 in uh, your tri triola. That's the uh, the stats textbook that we're currently using. All right. Well, as always, ask your teachers if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.